Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Koji Sheldon. The head is big for a reason. And this is Convo with the head. Uh, we they can't have a special conversation. I know if you have been following me on Twitter or Instagram, you have seen me posting content about DVLA. Now, DVLA woke up one day and they said, um, paper business and your man and they are not going to do again. They are going fully digitalized on all their platforms. And that is what they are doing. That is what they are pushing. Now, there are systems and structures that they have put in place that a lot of people, uh, where they patronize them as service, you know, they know they understand, or people say don't know some of these systems and structures they exist. So it is imperative and important say, I go bring a rep, make it come, explain some of the dynamics, some of the improvement, some of the things that you can do to help you to facilitate your car registration if you they want any information, I go figure. So in the studio here with me, I have a rep from DVLA, we they can have DVLA conversation. So for, for those of you that are importing the cars that are buying the new cars, the DV number plate, this is this conversation. There are some people that buy a car, they don't want to register it. I have never understood that. But yes, uh, that is the conversation we are going to have. And I have a rep uh, from DVLA here with me. Bossman, welcome. Yeah, thank you very much, my brother. Please, what is your name? My name is Kwesi Bona Utosrebo. Kwesi Bona Utosrebo. Yes, sir. God damn. You see the way this, the name get gun and things. Utu, <laughs> you get gun, you get stone. Utosrebo. That is heavy. Chief right, Bona. Right. I've, I've seen yeah, it. I've seen that. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have Chief Bona in the studio. We are going to have the DVLA conversation. But, boss, so DVLA, as I, I mean, I said in the introduction, you guys woke up one day and you decided to go all digital. You said, nah, you are brand new paper, nah, customer number one, customer number two. So, right now, we are digitalizing our platform. We are making the lives of our customers you know, enjoyable when they access our platform. What informed this decision and what has been the progress so far? Right. So thank you very much and greetings to your viewers. Thank you. Uh, definitely, we have a destination we are going. Okay. But we came from somewhere. Mm. We came from purely manual processes mm. that were using to serve our customers. Mm. And they were purely paper-based. Now, paper-based processes, you know, there are challenges for them. Yeah. Uh, document control problems where files tracing became uh, very difficult. Uh, the integrity of these files, have, having kept them for many years and decades, even becomes challenging. Uh, would you believe that people still come to our office, come and look for information on vehicles registered with P and A, a and B and all those, all those ones? Yes. Okay. And can you imagine 20? six or 27 years mm. paper is still lying down what mm. could happen to it okay. the characters and things may even uh, go bad mm. so we're looking for best ways mm. of serving our customers mm. so this led us into uh, starting this journey mm. of digitization mm. we started it many years ago oh, okay. so we started with our licensing process for the driver okay. and then um, it's been so successful so we have come to the vehicle mm. side also okay. to digitalize it mm. So this uh, is going to take away many of the suits that we've been having. People to, sue you. Yeah, they sue us because... Why, why, why do they sue Yes, you because people? we have had instances in the manual systems where we had challenges identifying uh, our clients that came to us. Oh. So there were a lot of identity thefts. Yeah, people came to us with photocopies of documents mm. and we couldn't authenticate whether they were genuine or not. ID cards, we mm. couldn't verify them. But thankfully, in the digital platform, mm. our system is hooked to the national database okay. of national identification. Card, okay. So I don't even need the copy for anything. If you remember the name, if you remember the number, or even if you don't remember anything, just put your fingerprint on my verification device. Mm. It will pull your information for me. Okay. Again, uh, so that has come to solve the identity terms and challenges we had. Mm. That led to a lot of legal suits. Mm. And then again, uh, most owners did not give consent to transactions that we thought they had given consent to. Wow. So, so there people, were a lot of things happening in the back. Yeah, end. people would bring uh, authority letters from the owner and as to whether it came from the owner or not. You can't verify. Sitting at DVLA, you wouldn't know. And you would like to believe that indeed, if he says that the owner has sent him, then indeed he has sent him. Mm. But in the digital platform, if the owner even sent you to my end, he needs to verify at wherever he is whether he's in Ghana or outside Ghana, anywhere, mm. once he has a smartphone, he can verify. Mm. This, to a larger extent, tells me he has indeed sent you. Okay. If he hasn't sent you, 
He wouldn't verify. He would not verify. And if he doesn't verify, the system would not allow the process to go through. Oh. So even if you are my brother, I can't bypass that process. Okay. So that uh, if even you are married couples, you are business partners, you are friends, which uh, normally the problems come from these group of this people. These group of people. Friends, okay. and then the other colleague would just take the other person's car and smartly want to mm. transact without his consent and stuff. Mm. So this has come also to take away instances where we have clients mm. who said that, uh, I never asked that they registered the car. Or I sold the car, the guy didn't finish paying, mm. so I was waiting for him to bring the last part before I transferred to him. But mm. of course, before he realized, no, I can't be a transfer, and I'll be registered because of the paper and the car and I'm an mm. So now this uh, digital platform has come to take away all these Mm. Uh, incidents that were happening. And Are you people seeing results in the back end? Serious results. Okay. Uh, serious results in that, uh, I must say that from the beginning, the customer didn't really understand. Yeah. And uh, people thought that we said that everybody must come. Okay. But then there is a provision. Uh, we have an app at the Play Store. So if you cannot come and you have sent somebody to us, yes, you can send somebody to us. But if the person do come, we still need you to confirm okay. by verifying. On the app? On the app. What's the name of the app? Uh, the DVLA Verify. Okay, DVLA, DVLA Verified. Verified. Okay. And people have done it. Uh, my friend did it from the UK oh, okay. uh, just yesterday because he sent somebody to register his car. Actually, he left the car to be sold. And as at the time he was here, the buyer wasn't forthcoming. Mm. And so uh, it was when he was in the UK mm. before the buyer came to pay all the money. And he now gave a go-ahead for the process to go through. Mm. By just going to Play Store, mm. uh, verify for us mm. to know that indeed you have given consent for the work to go. Is the verification process eff eff efficient? Because I've seen instances where people... I mean, they try to use the platform to verify, but it's like system is down, this and this and this. People, when I posted it, I think people came to complain in the comment section. And they are, I mean, they are complaining with I mean, the was, verification. Yeah, verification. Okay, it's so like, the verification. It's not the smoothness of the process. Okay, so the, I must say that for now, the verification works only on uh, Android platform. Yeah. Um, iOS is still doing their investigations on the app before mm. they allow it come live. Mm. And so if you, had, if you do not use an Android platform, mm phone you will not be able to do the verification mm. uh, however you know it's a triangular process mm. and so dvla is at one side national identification is at one side mm. and you the customer where you are you're also at one side so three if any of us have challenges you will not be able to verify because you will pick your information live from national identification so if they are down you cannot verify mm. if where you are also you have challenges with your data your connectivity is not good the uh, system may be okay, but you cannot verify. Mm. And again, uh, the process of verification uses facial identification. Mm. And so we would like clients to rather take a picture of their face and crop it. Mm. But unfortunately, sometimes they take a whole picture of themselves mm. during the, the verification. Whole... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <it's>, uh, <laughs> if you open the app, it will ask you to enter the invoice <laughs> number of the transaction. Mm. And mm. then opens a camera for you on mm. your phone mm. and asks you to take a picture of your face mm. because we use facial identification okay. to pull your records from national identification for us. Okay. Unfortunately, people take their picture even up to their yeah. again everywhere. Everything. This makes the sensor become a bit uh, confused as to whether indeed it's you or not. The face or the stomach. <laughs> and so, uh, we advise customers mm. that crop it to only your face okay. because the system is using your facial identification mm. to pull your records, match it with your face at the national identification to pull your information for us. Mm. So we will not even require you to give us any picture. Mm. But the picture that you took when you went to national identification is what we are going to use mm. after we pulled all your records mm. at our end. Mm. So when any of these things do not go well, you may have challenges uh, verifying. Okay. But uh, if you try the first time, it doesn't work. Maybe try relocating to another place. Try checking whether you have data on your phone. Okay. And, and uh, it will work. Okay. If you have challenges doing it on your phone mm. and you are in, in the country, you can go to any DVLA office near you mm. to verify. Once the digital platform, mm. we go there with your transactional ID or the invoice number. Uh, we have another one in the office we call the Kojak. You just put your finger, print your finger on it. Mm. It would also pull your information for us. Mm. Again, we have uh, another one. It's just like a phone, but also in the office yeah. that our team use when they go out. Uh, that one, there's an Emiko, mm. is can also do a facial one or fingerprint one mm. also for you. So there are many options to do the verification. 
Yeah. So in your quest to achieve this excellence in the digital space or the digital system that you are on, have you guys made the conscious effort to educate the public on the wider level that this is an effective system that we are putting out? We need a lot of people to come on and utilize this and let us know maybe your feedback or whatnot. We need everyone on this system. The, the education side of things, how have you people, I mean, you know, go about the whole thing? Are people, you know, getting to understand what are some of the challenges that you guys are facing or from the side of, you know, the people the coming? Public, yeah. Yes. Okay, so thank you. Your question is in twofold. Whether yes. we have done education. Yes. Yes, we have done and we are doing now. Okay. And uh, this you, is one still, of you are still helping us <laughs> yeah. to reach out to the larger majority of yeah. the people. Yeah. Uh, another challenge we have had uh, in trying to educate the people has been the fact that mm. the media space now is so wide. Mm. In Accra alone, yesterday I was learning that there are over about 1,000 media mm. uh, channels or outlets in Accra. Mm. And so can you imagine doing uh, education on even 100 of them? Mm. It means those who may be listening to the other 900 mm may be cut out yeah, yeah. but of course uh, we have had engagement with stakeholders mm. uh, association of um, asset dealers okay. uh, we even started with them from the time we we're building mm. the software mm. and we expected that they engage their members mm. because we dealt with the executives again we have dealt with Ghana, Ghana automobile dealers association okay and uh, we are in tune with them and wherever we have got into now uh, it's also due to their contributions. Okay. Yes. And we will continue doing it because we know uh, every day somebody new comes into the country. Mm. Somebody with the information also leaves the country. Yeah. Yes. And so we'll continue doing it. And uh, we like to play with everybody that also hears mm. about us. Also to share the good news to everybody. We are highly present also on all social media handles. Mm. Uh, though we know we do not have so much Followership, but you people but, are trying now. Yes, I've seen content. Yes, I've seen you doing some explainer videos. Yes, and yes, yes, yes. So if you see any of our videos, you try and share for share. your friends. Also share to know, like half hour length. Share yes, it. share. Yes, good it's for your friends to get to know. Yeah. Because if you should understand the processes, you realize it's smoother, mm. it's cheaper, mm. and it's actually very convenient mm. to use the digital platform than to use the manual systems okay. where we were, okay. where we don't intend going there again. But the, uh, is the manual system still no, in use? No, it's no, gone. no, no. Okay. We cut off and every vehicle we have registered 2024 mm. was done digitally. Mm. Yes. That's beautiful. Yes. But, yes. you know, yes. do you people, you know, uh, identify or do you people subscribe to or do you... Wait, wait, the Goro boys in there, or the middlemen, right? They have come out to say that. And I know you know there are middlemen. Yeah, middlemen, yes. People that people. assist people to. Yes, yes. What does that mean for this group of people? Okay, mm -hmm. so um, first and foremost, mm. to have somebody represent you transact in any official space mm. is a constitutional right of every individual. Okay. And so if I cannot go somewhere, I can send somebody to go and transact on my behalf. Mm. What's important is for me to empower him okay. by letting whoever is going to serve mm. know that indeed I have sent him, that he hasn't come there on his own mm. without my consent. And so in the manual systems, we're expecting authority notes. Mm. And they were always coming to us with authority notes that they have been sent by so their something. proprietors, yes, to come and transact on their behalf. Mm. So they, they are agents. Mm. And uh, in the current environment, mm. you can still send somebody to come, mm. just that you have to verify from your end. Mm. Also to authenticate as to whether you have indeed sent him and that he's transacting with your consent. Mm. And so this is the uh, situation or circumstance. Mm. At first, we could not authenticate whether indeed the authority note you have brought was okay. okay. But for uh, the, in the, on the digital platform, you have to authenticate for us, wherever you are, mm. for us to be able to move on with the transaction or accept the person you have sent to us mm. to come and transact. So is the, in this system, are we not going to get to a situation where people are even going to sell this digital slot? Because we've seen it before. Uh, okay. It, so, it's your system that, so, you know, is it going to stand that kind of, you know, breaches and things? Because we know the country that we live in. I'm just throwing okay. this out there. So because once much. again, people have amplified it in the comment section that, in the nearest future, these slots, these spaces that people feel like it's, you know, it's fenced, it's oh, walled. Yes. People will still get way, find ways and means to bridge okay. the system. Okay, thank you. Uh, people may attempt, 
but uh, we have very good IT security systems. Okay. And so in the line of attacks, mm. cyber challenges and that, I can tell you that we have one of the best mm. uh, systems in place okay. uh, to protect it. Again, uh, access to it, our platform mm -hmm. has two phases, where we have the back office and the front office. Okay. So the front office is where you, the customer, sits. Mm. And uh, access to your platform is as secure as you make it, because you will access it with your password okay. and your login credentials. We have even added another layer of security uh, with um, a login uh, OTP, oh, okay. one-time uh, password the, 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 in addition to your password yeah so even if your password has been compromised mm. and somebody gets to know that this is your login credentials mm. he wants to log in to assess your information mm. and transact with us mm. an otp will be sent to your phone for you to confirm mm. and if you allow your password to be compromised and allow even another person to still have access to the second layer mm. of getting access to the otp mm. then we cannot guarantee that your end will be protected. And okay. So just as I said, our side is protected. So the responsibility is to to for side. you also to protect mm. your account. So mm. no, nobody goes into your account mm. to transact with the DVLA. Okay. Well, we will when the person is able to log in and is able to also receive the OTP and come in again, then that confirms what that indeed it's you that we are dealing with. Okay. Yeah. So now that we are on this system and we are talking about its efficiency, walk me through the process of registering a new vehicle. Let's say I have a vehicle. I come to DVLA, I contact DVLA. The steps, just walk me through. Yeah, so thank you very much. Yeah. So this has not come to change the already known existing processes. Mm. Just that now, the same things we're doing on papers, mm. we are now doing it on systems. Okay. So you will first go to the PVTS, the private vehicle test centers, mm. at stations that PVTS is our requirement. Mm. I'm saying this because there are certain centers to register a vehicle, you don't need to go to any of them. Okay. Where do PVTSs do not exist? Mm. So you go there. Mm. When you come to our yard, we have uh, custom officers who would also go through your documentation, mm. confirm whether the duties and taxes paid are up to date. Mm. Uh, they will still do that. Then our vehicle examiner will take uh, charge, inspect the vehicle. Instead of writing the information on a piece of paper mm. at the back of the custom papers he used to, he would have a, a PDA okay. to enter the same information on. Mm. And it's at that point that he make a determination as to what you would be paying, mm. uh, how we will be registering the vehicle, mm. and also establish the, who will be owning the vehicle after the process. Okay. As in whether you are registering directly into your name or awesome. you have bought and you were transferring. Okay. And so you have to make all information available to the vehicle examiner mm. so that if he needs to advise you, he advises you from there. And if we need to stop, we also stop. Okay. So for example... On what grounds are you stopping? Though? Yes, you have come there without knowing that you needed to bring the old owner or you needed to let the old owner contact him to be aware, to be ready to verify. Mm. And so some will come to us, and as soon as we start, they say, oh, he has gone to the UK. I don't even know where he is. Okay, hold on. Let me contact him and tell him that oh. whilst I'm here, this and this will be ongoing or will be happening. Oh, I need the ID details of the other person. Oh, I need my ID details or whatever. And so the vehicle examiner will give you all this information mm. and uh, guidance so then you can make the decision mm. to proceed. Mm. From there, you are going to pay. And we do not want you to pay only for us to get locked up that we will not be able to continue. Okay. And that's how come he would have to explain everything to you. So from there, you make the choice as to whether you are uh, proceeding or not proceeding okay. with the processes. After that, there's a clerical officer who would scan the document you have brought and mm. do verification for the owner or okay. owners. Okay. Owner because it may be you having brought your vehicle and registering. Mm. Or owners because you have bought and you are transferring, transferring. to somebody else. Or maybe two people own the, the vehicle okay. or three people or more sometimes. Mm. We have to verify all these. Has people. there been a situation like that? Well, like uh, five people own I have car. nine. I, nine? I had nine people own the vehicle and all of them want to be verified. Can, and, damn yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> the, another reason why you should inform the vehicle examiner mm. is he will choose the number of owners okay. in the process of uh, inspecting the vehicles. And if he makes that choice, the slots for owners' information will open according to the number of owners he selected. Mm. So, for example, vehicle examiner is, uh, inspected the vehicle and selects three owners. 
there will be slots for three people for us to upload their information mm. as new owners of the vehicle. Mm. And that's how come you should disclose everything to the vehicle examiner mm. to make their choice from the beginning. Mm. You also want a special number. Mm. For example, when you're coming, your number is maybe 8,000, like I have on my vehicle. And your next vehicle, you want it to be the same. Still inform the vehicle examiner mm. to also indicate and take a box to say that you want a special number. Mm. Then when you proceed, proceed, the system will ask you to enter the number you want mm. when you are generating the invoice to go and pay. Mm. And so that's why I said it's important to disclose everything to the vehicle examiner mm. so he knows the right uh, boxes to take and the information to put down. Is this the onboarding team. process? No, that's a different process. I, okay. will, I will come there. Okay, yeah. And so then uh, after your information is uploaded and mm. owners are verified, mm. then the approving officer also goes through what has been done? Okay. All the information that has been uploaded, the mm. verification that has been done. Clicks on the button to approve it. Print a title, mm. a printed certificate okay. for you. And then the process ends. So uh, can you do that in a day? Oh, in a mat the whole day is too much. Oh, if, okay. if a car can register 350 vehicles in one day, mm. then you can divide that into eight hours that it worked. And so let's say 30 minutes. Yeah, you, you should go be, register you done. your car. I mean, okay. click, 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 and you are done. You are done. You are, you are done. That's and so cool. That's it's, cool. Uh, yeah, it's up to you to get your information. Right. And then if you your information, go. Dave, right there, you go yes. register. Yes. Okay. So that is different from the onboarding. Okay. So you see, we are registering vehicles mm. digitally on okay. our digital platform. Okay. But there are other vehicles we have registered already manually mm. Mm. on the street, like my car and maybe your car and any others. Mm we have created another avenue to also bring them onto the digital platform. Mm. So that process is what we call the onboarding. Okay. So that is different from new registration? New registration. Okay. So if you have a vehicle existing already, mm. there's a registration number on it already, mm. then we can onboard you also onto the platform oh, okay. for you to have your processes also done on the digital but platform. But your number plate doesn't change? No, it will not change. Okay. Your information is existing in our manual files. These files, we have scanned them onto our digital platforms. Okay. And so when we onboard you, we just need to add your biometric information to mm. your information that is in our platform. They mean so this one is important. Very, very, very important. Okay. And so uh, we have a data warehouse that has all the vehicle information in the country. Mm. And so it's up to us through the onboarding process mm. to add the digital information, the biometric information of the owners of the vehicles okay. in addition to mm. the scanned document we have. Mm. That process will be the onboarding. Okay. So that's but then are people onboarding? We have had a few onboarded. Okay. And to open it up for the wholesale onboard of the whole country, mm. we are taking our time because you see, even this uh, platform was open somewhere last year. Okay. But we did piloting and tested the systems mm. and exposed this to stress mm. to see what would happen. Mm. Because we do not want to let customers rush to our office to come in on board mm. only to have challenges resulting from the stress okay. that the system is being exposed to mm. or whatever so now people are onboarding as they trickle in mm. through our piloting but then uh, we're going to go nationwide onboarding at the days we will announce very soon okay but in in situations where people don't onboard well, let's say there is a time frame for people to onboard and they don't on board. What is the uh, replications or what is the consequences? Okay, so what will happen is when we start the onboarding processes, mm. full gear, mm. uh, we'll give everybody the opportunity to onboard and we'll give timelines okay. for you to onboard. Okay. But we are going to operate on the digital platform. Mm. Uh, we are going to be issuing roadways on digital platforms. That's the destination we want to get to. Mm. We do not want to fill roadworthy papers and sign signatures, mm. and then my book is torn, mm. and then I was sitting on the motorbike, the rain beat me, mm. and I went to the <laughs> workshop, engine oil is mm. in the paper. No, mm. it's going to be on a card, mm. like the driver's license, that will be used for the roadworthiness. Mm. So if you do not on board, it's just like we change the Ghana city, mm. and you still want to keep your old oh, city. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> it will get to a time after the time the grace period has elapsed mm. when we start mm. that you would not be able to even purchase cocoa with that money again mm. and so uh, if people fail to onboard their roadworthy systems and transactions with us would not be in the manual form anymore mm. and so they will not even be able to transact with us mm. he'll be like my grandfather who didn't want to change his license <laughs> because he said he has kept it so nice that mm. 
uh, at his age he doesn't want to drive again so he want to put that one down yeah. and then uh, leave it like yeah. that and so you may want to say i would not want to on board <laughs> and maybe keep my old information but the bus will leave you okay where we're going the platforms and all the benefit yeah. that comes along with it mm. you will not enjoy mm. the benefits including easy access to your information your own information mm. sometimes it's a pity when customers come to our office and they are looking for their own information in the manual system we say please hold on yeah. please wait just wait for me then close of day as they go and come tomorrow mm. because i'm manually looking for this yeah. file and i cannot find it why did it take you so like th- why okay this was supposed to be done back then i don't know much much shopping person so, so you see mm-hmm. if you see our chief executive our management and everybody mm. If we are coming out, we have to come big time. Okay. And we have to come well. Mm. It's people's data we are handling or dealing with. Okay. I quite remember in one of the statements, he says, if I cannot do it and do it well, then and I will do, do it. Right. Yeah. And that was the statement from my chief executive. Okay. If we could roll licenses successfully mm. and got all the awards globally yeah. for very successful license digitalization, we couldn't come out with vehicle digitalization in a way and manner that would even uh, not bring down the benefits for people to come running at us for us to go back to the manual system mm. we had to come well mm. we started this journey 2012 mm. and 20, been, 2012 yes and we I started this journey 2012 <laughs> yes yeah. that's it we yeah. started this journey 2012 and it's been silent mm. we've uh, printed cards piloted we had challenges mm. many challenges mm. and then we went back we came back again 2015. We came back again 2018. So it wasn't smooth like that. Uh, what you're seeing today has been <laughs> working. Series of okay. Yeah, I tell you. Mm. And so uh, when we even, what we're doing now, VRS, mm. is VRS 2. We have come 2. with VRS. Mm. Yes. Mm. We've come with the 1. Mm. And we had challenges with them. Mm. And we didn't stop. Because we've seen the successes, mm. even when we're changing licenses and, and, and the rest. And we knew where we wanted to get to. Yeah. And that's how come we are here like this. Mm. And uh, much as it may be late, it's better. Mm. Better late than, than never. Okay. Yes. So where is where is the VRS heading towards right now? What is the future looking like for VRS? Very Let's good. say in the next five years, six years. Very maybe. good. Okay. I'm looking at mm. avoiding all the stack of papers mm. I walked through. Some of them when they pile in front of me because customers are there, sometimes it's almost my height. Mm. I'm looking at all of them going away. I'm looking at working and enjoying work even from my laptop and mm. from my phone. Mm. When I was, while I was waiting, mm. I had to appro- I just approved the transaction on my phone. Okay. And we are looking at customers. In those days, you would do paper, paper. Uh, those days, I want to call <laughs> the office and ah. ask for the file. Okay. And then there's somebody in the file room with the key. The, he open the door. He open it. Then you go and stand in front of the stack and just... Look through to look trace only your file. Do you people still have the stack of papers there? Oh, or you scan all of them, but the papers are there. Okay. And you, for uh, verification sake or any, okay. any reason that may okay. require that we go back to okay. it. Okay. To maybe look for a specific information, yes. Okay. But they have all been scanned. Mm. And so we have a data warehouse, mm. which is the information now sitting in our server. Mm. Is and the data then, safe with you? Very, very, 100% Because, I mean, people are mining data information and selling it. The DVLA platform, okay. the information that you mine from me, I don't mind it being with you, but is it safe with you? Very. So okay. I didn't finish answering the first one, okay. but I want to continue before I come to this no one. No problem, sorry. <laughs> yeah, so we are also looking at stopping all this uh, manual roadworthy systems and the rest and doing roadworthies with smart cards. Mm. You see, just uh, some few days ago, uh, tap to pay was launched, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I really love that idea. I've seen it elsewhere in other countries. And we are going to do road with this just with your card as well, smart card also. Okay. And we will avoid all these things. We are looking at communicating with the courts, security agencies, and the rest in real time. Okay. When they need to arrest a criminal, as soon as they punch a button, they mm. would have the information on the vehicle. Mm. If a car goes through red lights and the police need to send a ticket, they take you to go to the actual owner. Mm. Because all the information will be sitting on a digital platform. Mm. Again, if um, we need to pull your records out, Mm. it becomes very simple and very easy. Now, 
uh, if you come back to the second question you asked, yeah. which is to confirm, no, no, repeat the question again. Uh, is our data say with you? Oh, as I mentioned it earlier on, mm. that we have the best or one of the best in terms of data security. Has it been tested and approved by FDA? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this one tested and approved by FDA. Okay. And so uh, I'm waiting to see what happens in future if uh, somebody else may be able to now bypass our security, but we've got a lot of firewalls mm. that uh, I doubt okay. whether somebody can go through. And okay. I want to assure every customer that your information with us is very safe. Okay. And it's up to you to protect your part okay. as well. By not letting your password lose, and then your OTP mm. also lose. But I'm not sure you can lose, let your password lose, and also give the phone to somebody, mm. also to log in onto the phone to receive the OTP to also continue the login. Mm. So it's a very safe environment to operate from. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been an enlightened conversation with um, Chief Bona from DVLA. <laughs> he knows his stuff, though. Yes. yes. He, he basically, and that is why he's, he's the one fronting the education. And when you go to their pages, they're sitting in the corner educating people. Do this, do that. I appreciate that. And the fact that they are doing this thing, because you know the vehicle registration process in this country in the past. People have always complained about it. So I would um, encourage everyone to try their system, the new system. The, the electronic one, the digital one. Let us try and test it. We want the country to work. They are working. We have to help them work. So um, thanks for coming and thanks for coming to educate uh, yeah. my audience. We are very appreciative of the fact that you made time for us this morning. And if you have anything that you want to add to the already too much too people, <laughs> information. Rich, rich. Yes. No, it's not yes, too I, much. It's, yeah. it's just enough yeah. information for the public. And uh, I like to say that we are concerned about your safety as DVLA. Okay. And uh, please keep on sharing the information to everybody mm. to have patience for the system if you are having challenges. Mm. Our doors are open. Okay. We have helplines. You can just Google DVLA okay. and get our contact to call to give us the complaint. Do you have people picking it up? Because until they give us a mixtape. I just them. wish somebody would try it right now and see okay. whether nobody picks it up. Okay. We have, yeah, you can just try it right now. All right. And so uh, we need that feedback also mm -hmm. to get better because our aim is to continuously improve and get better mm. at doing what we do. Okay. So thank you very much. DVLA, your safety is our concern. Your safety is our, our concern, concern, but the number is here, so I'm going to call. Ah, you Google it. Is right. it, so you see, is it 0800? I didn't, no, it's not the 0800. Yeah. I didn't even put the numbers. The 020. The, number, the 020, just call it. Okay. I'm going to call the 020. Yes. If it comes to his phone, I will not take that. No, it won't come to my phone. <laughs> okay. We have a dedicated call center. <laughs> Please speak. Don't disappoint your boss. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, you see, somebody just picked it. Okay, so uh, my name is Bernard. Um, um, I don't know what to say. I was trying to test your 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 line to see if someone will pick uh, will pick it up. Uh, thanks for picking it up. But I will be calling later on for um, to ask about uh, other things. So thank you very much. You're welcome. Oh, all right. He, she wasn't rude though. I thought she was going. Hey, you know. All right, so someone so actually picked. Those days <laughs> where you you had cracky old, uh, non smiley faces, mm. and uh, those hard, scary mm. attitudes were are gone. Mm. Now, you have young, active men Energet who understands mm. and knows their roles, yeah. and uh, who knows that they are going to be rewarded for mm. doing their work diligently and well. I'm glad that when we put this to the test, there is. Oh yeah, it was yeah. actually within like five seconds. Yes, yes. And then, so if you go to a call center, you'll be amazed. Mm. We have people waiting to speak all the dialects mm. and uh, having their headphones just ready to pick up. Okay. Ladies Thank and gentlemen, practical solution for you. You have to go and test the system. My name is Koji Sheldon, and yes, thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel. We are. But wait, DVL, how can people follow them on social media and everything? What is their handles on various yeah. uh, So I'll let you put it up. Okay. I'll let you put it up. You are on Instagram. You are on Twitter. Yes. DVL is on Twitter. DVL is on Twitter. Yes. They are doing agenda on Twitter. I'm lying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs>